I'm going to tell you a, f a few stories. And the first one is this. A few years ago, our team was invited to collaborate uh, with the Guggenheim Museum in an urban laboratory in New York City. They had quite a bit of money, so that meant that we could throw a bunch of parties. <laughs> At one of these parties, we invited people and selected them randomly out of the crowd, and uh, we asked them if we could take their picture. And once we had them corner, we introduced a twist. We told them that we were gonna take their picture with another stranger. So, first we got them to introduce each other and share something nice that had happened to them during the week. So just a little bit of superficial sharing. And then they had to pose for the picture as if they were old friends who hadn't seen each other in years. <laughs> At first, people are a little bit shy, but then they really get into it. There's a lot of hugging going on. Okay, now you're probably wondering why on earth we're doing all this. A happy city, we spent a lot of time thinking how we can build happier places. So, in order to do that, first you have to figure out what are the key ingredients of happiness. So we've looked at evidence from public health, neuroscience, behavioral economics, and the conclusion is this that there is no more powerful ingredient of human happiness than positive social interactions, positive social connections. So how much do social connections matter? So consider my family in Mexico City. Here we are, and we love any excuse to get together and have a party. See the guy over there with the beer? That'd be my dad. <laughs> he looks like a happy guy, doesn't he? Okay, so it's not just the beer and the tacos and the laughter that makes us happy. Evidence shows that people who are socially connected are more resilient. They're less likely to be affected by colds, heart attacks, depression, and even cancer. Connected people sleep better at night. They're more productive. They live longer, up to 15 years longer than people who are socially isolated. So if we really care about having healthy, resilient, and even wealthy societies, we should care about the quality of a social connection. But how much do, or what is the relationship, relationship between social connections and cities? Well, we also know that social interactions in public really matter. UBC psychologist here, Elizabeth Dunn, has found that having eye contact or even casual contact with strangers on the street is just as relevant and makes people just as happy at the end of their day as their interactions with close friends and family. So again, we really have to figure out and pay attention to the way that public space affects our sense of well-being and our connections with people. And academics really do fascinating research on these questions. The problem is that it rarely reaches the people who actually plan and build cities. So at Happy City, we've taken cues from these studies and started conducting our own experiments. And each one of these experiments are meant to give people a visceral understanding of the science behind them. So I'm going to give you a couple of those examples of experiments. Back at the Guggenheim, we pulled people out of a party and asked them if they wanted to participate in an experiment. So we exposed them to very different environments. Some of them got a savanna landscape, and it was complete with songs of birds and creeks. Very nice. Others got stuck in an urban jungle, and they were being serenaded by traffic and sirens. At the end of eight minutes of being in this immersed environment, and that was all the time for the experiment, we asked them if they wanted to donate to a good cause. <laughs> so you already know where this is going, right? So the people that were basking in nature were far more generous than the people that were stuck in the urban jungle. And okay, you may look at those pictures and you may think that it looks more like a high school science fair. But really, real scientists 
keep finding the same effects in the lab and in the field. Our exposure to nature doesn't just make us feel good, it actually makes us nicer with each other. So what this means is that we need to infuse more doses of nature into everyday life. We must be able to see it, we must be able to touch it. Here's another experiment we did. We worked with University of Waterloo professor Colin Ellard, and we created an emotional tour through the Lower East Side of Manhattan. We were curious to learn what were the emotional impacts of the streets. We rigged people with skin conductance scalps, which measured uh, people's levels of arousal. And by that I mean the level of excitement as they walk through the street. We also hacked Blackberry phones, and they, were, um, they would punch in their happiness levels at various points throughout the walk. We learned a lot through this experiment, and one of the most important things was this. People were reported ha being happier here, in front of this messy, old tenement street with lots of bars, doors, and activities than they were in this environment, which was a brand new health food store. What's the difference? Well, this is an active place. There's lots going on. The other one is a dead environment. This one only had doors on either end of the street. So we know that these kinds of environments are less happy, they're less safe. People walk faster through these kinds of places. So what are these all boiled down to? Remember the Guggenheim? We have a mountain of evidence to demonstrate that the design of cities really affect the way we treat and regard each other. Remember how we ask strangers to pose as if they were old friends? This is why this experiment matters. We had asked all of them a standard social trust question. And the question went like this. If you drop your wallet or your purse on your way home tonight, what do you think are the chances that you would get it back if a stranger found it? And we found that the experience of conviviality produced a trust response among the participants. So we had uh, our test subjects and we had our control group. And okay, the control group was all the other drunk people at the party. <laughs> but that moment of conviviality made people trust everybody else in the entire city. We really have to integrate all these ideas in the way that we plan and build cities. Developers, architects, and our authorities need to take into account the emotional impact of urban design. But we can't just let design do all the work. Each one of us also has the power to build more connected lives, more social cities and happier cities. How do we do that? Well, evidence also, also tells us that there's nothing better for happiness than working together with our allies and a cause that is bigger than ourselves. When we reach out to our neighbors, our friends, and our community, we build cities that are healthier, cities that are happier, and they're more resilient. And really, that is the recipe for happy cities. And I look forward to thinking about how we can do that together. Thank you.